Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. It is Monday morning here and the forecast today was not snow, it was dry. But as you can probably see behind me, we've got some snow this morning. The goal today, we were going to start laying out some, uh, some flags on the ground so that we can start to envisage our site plan and maybe even start some wood chipping that we need to do to clear a slash pile that's right in the way at the top that we didn't get to last year. But given the snow, we're going to change our plans slightly. With the new wood chipper that we've got on the tractor, we want to try and direct the wood chips into the builder bags, those big yard bags that we used uh, last year. They worked really well for moving the wood chips around. They didn't work so well to sort of aim the chipper at. It kind of sprays everywhere and some go in the bag, but we lose a load as well. I've been trying to work out how to build a little stand or support to hold the builder bag open and maybe even like a little deflector shield that can sort of direct the the wood chips in so this morning i'm going to try a little prototype of a builder bag stand it's not gonna be anything fancy i'm going to build out of some like janky one by twos that that came off the sawmill last year so they are a little bit dry they've dried over winter but they're not great they're not perfectly dimensional they were kind of the off cuts the they're not so good ones, they've got plenty of bark on and things. I'm going to build it out of those and we'll see how that works. See if it's strong enough, see if we can lift it out afterwards with a tractor, uh, just kind of test the idea. If it works, great, um, we'll keep using it. If not, I can make some modifications and we haven't wasted good lumber and things on, on building it. So that's my plan this morning. Meanwhile, Diana is back down at the RV. She is working on the next video and, uh, and some of the admin things associated with the house. So uh, yeah, let's get to work. These are the builder bags that we've been using. So we bought three last year. Uh, they've still got wood chips in and are basically just frozen blocks right now. They've been out all winter. When they thaw out, we'll be able to use those again. But for now, we've bought two more as well. These, uh, they're about $20 each. You can buy them at Home Depot. We bought these on Amazon. Dimension-wise, they're rated for £2,200, which is about double what our tractor loader can lift. So no issues with these being strong enough for what we're trying to lift with them. The wood chips, when we fill a whole bag with wood chips, the tractor can still lift them. So I don't know exactly what it weighs, maybe 800 pounds, something like that, I would guess if I had to. In terms of dimensions, these are 35 inches by 35 inches square at the bottom, about 40 inches high, and then they have handles that come off the top. So my plan is to build a four legged stand with legs that go down to the bottom and just end. There's no bracing at the bottom. Come up to the top and have a square brace at the top. So my thinking is that by doing that, it'll kind of hold the bag open. It doesn't need to be super strong, I, I hope, because it's just holding open an empty bag. We can then fill it with wood chips while it's held open. And at the end, because there's nothing at the bottom to kind of get in the way, we can use the tractor just to lift the whole thing straight out. And so I'm gonna do this using some of this lumber. So you can see this big piece I have here. This is a piece of one by two that we cut on the sawmill last year. They kind of had a load of bark on it, so not something we want to use for good furniture or siding or anything like that, uh, for building with generally, but perfect for a project like this where that honestly doesn't matter. So uh, we've got, I think about four pieces of this, which I'm hoping should be enough for this project. Uh, they're about nine feet tall, a little over nine feet long, I should say. That may be enough. If not, I'll go and grab some more up the top or maybe even improvise with some of the the pallet lumber that you can see behind me here that I've still got. So that's the plan. So I'm going to start by opening up this bag, making sure that the dimensions kind of match. Um, I suspect these dimensions are probably the outside dimension and depending on how the corners are kind of sewn together, I may need to like reduce my dimensions a little bit. So I did do a model of this in SketchUp just to kind of play with a few different ways of bracing it. I'm, I haven't got a copy of that with me, that's down in the RV, and I did that for two by four lumber anyway. So I'm kind of, this is like I said, just a bit of a prototype. We'll try this nice and simple, see how it looks and uh, fingers crossed it works, but if not, nothing lost, we'll make something new.
Here we go, this is the finished kind of construction that I'm aiming for. Over the winter, finally, we got all our permits, including the current use program, where in exchange for lower taxes, you maintain undeveloped land. So we took out an area for the house site, and it's all been approved, and now we can finally start felling trees for the house site. First though, we have this big pile of slash behind me, and first we'll need to chip that. Last year we rented a chipper for a day at a time when we needed to chip something, and we really enjoyed having the wood chips and being able to clear the slash ourselves, so we decided to buy a chipper. Also, to make the chipping easier, Matt built this frame uh, that goes inside the boulder bag so that it stays upright and we can more easily chip the wood inside. Now it's just carrying our forest helmets. This was our first time using the Woodland Mills WC68 wood chipper that we got for our Kubota L3901 tractor. And first impressions are really positive. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to adjust. Uh, you probably saw us holding this red bar back a lot. That's the control arm and it's fairly simple to adjust that so it's not quite sensitive. It kept sort of slipping into, into neutral. That's a common thing to adjust on here. Uh, I just, I, the tool is down in the uh, in the shipping container, so we'll do that next time we use it. The other thing you might have seen is we had to open up the, the chipper. We did manage to get it blocked at one point, and that's because we put in a pretty fat log and it was still on speed 10. So this has a speed gauge of one to 10. It essentially decides how fast the feeder pulls the log in and pulling in at speed 10 on that log with our tractor and the amount of power that our tractor has available on the PTO, was too much and stalled the uh, the chipper. It also then clogged up the chipper inside as well. So we opened it up, we're able to clear the blockage. This is somewhat smaller than the, the chippers that we've rented before, which we knew when we bought it, uh, but we're really impressed. One of the nice things about it being smaller is when it does get blocked, obviously when everything is turned off, you can actually reach down the chute here and clear a blockage pretty quickly, or at least see the blockage pretty easily. The other ones we rented, the chute was a lot larger, so you could never really get your arm down there to see if there was a blockage. You had to open it up. That said, if you do have to open it up, it's one screw or one bolt to, uh, to undo, and the whole thing pivots forward. So as far as the chipper goes, we, we've barely made a dent in this giant slash pile. This was this is a slash pile that the, uh, the, the crew who did our driveway put here for us. So it's been compacted with a, an excavator. Uh, it's really sort of dense in there. It's all matted together and really hard to pull things out. And we didn't have time to chip it before we left because we couldn't rent we, the chipper. Yeah, we couldn't find availability to rent the other chipper. So it's been sitting there now for what, like more than six months and it's tough to get in there, especially in these conditions. So it feels like we've barely made a dent, but we have filled this yard bag. And this is where actually the smaller chipper works really well. It doesn't throw these wood chips kind of 20 or 30 feet. And you remember from when we tried to do this before with a builder bag, we really struggled to get the rented wood chipper to direct down low enough to go into a bag. This chipper combined with the new frame that I built yesterday has worked really well. We've got almost no wood chips sprayed around. There's some underneath from where we cleared the blockage here. But otherwise we have filled this, this yard bag essentially to the top using our wood chipper in, I think it's been what, an hour, maybe an hour and a half that we've been going, really struggling to pull stuff out. So we could have been a lot quicker if we could get the material fast enough. I mean, I think when we're at full speed, we'll be filling this in about half an hour or so. Oh yeah. And my hope now is that we can lift this whole wooden assembly out. It's just on legs. And so we can lift this out. We may even be able to do it by hand. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's actually coming out even by hand. I was expecting we might have to use the tractor to do that, which was why I left space for a tractor fork to come under. But honestly, it looks like 
Oh. Yeah, that, that would come out by hand with two of us lifting. When we've done that, that then means that we can put this in the next builder bag and it's not kind of tied up in this one. So that allows us to fill the next builder bag. <laughs> Speaking of which, we've now got a full builder bag of this. So now we need to go and dump this somewhere. And we've identified a spot over there where, because we're going to get so many wood chips from clearing these trees. A whole load of these trees behind us here is what we've now got to take down. So we're going to get a whole ton of wood chips. We don't want to leave them in the bags. That's just going to get really expensive. These are about $20 a pop. So these are really just to allow us to move the wood chips around. We're going to go and create a pile over there and there's a good space for it over there. We can just mound them up. There is a slash pile there at the moment. So the next thing we want to do is clear that slash pile, move the little pallet box, the, the crate box in front the Diana built, and then we'll mound up all of the wood chips over there using the tractor with the forks to take this over there. And then probably the bucket just to start mounding that pile up. So that's the plan with the wood chips. As far as this big slash pile goes, I think we're gonna have to wait until the snow melts a bit more. It's yeah. just, I am so hot. I'm so warm <laughs> from like, climbing into that pile and trying to do that while it's icy with a chainsaw. I'm just, I, I don't love that at all. 